ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما praise belongs to allah we praise him and he ask him for guidance and forgiveness we seek protection from allah from the malice of our own souls and the evils of our own actions Whomsoever Allah guides, there is no one that can lead him astray. And whoever he allows to stray, there is no one that can guide him. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his saved and messenger. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and die not except as Muslims. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and always say the truthful word. that he may conduct your whole and sound affairs forgive you your sins and he that obeys allah and his messenger has indeed attained the highest achievement so brothers um just to, to for for today's khutbah i thought we let's concentrate on what we've done or what we've gone through over the last few months if not almost a year now relating to covid what's happening and it's so nice to see us all now here in the masjid together sitting together it's nice to see all those faces but for one and a half years almost we haven't been able to see people we haven't been able to hug people and those people even those people that are very close to us our family our relations so we should reflect on what's happened over this time this period we should see a change in ourselves over what's happened or what sort of a uh, position that Allah has put us in we should reflect and perhaps perhaps amongst us here when we were sitting perhaps there was something someone said or did to us that hurt us but for all that time now we've not been able to forgive them or go up to them and ask them for forgiveness and all this time we're still here So I would encourage those people that maybe you haven't seen someone this is a good opportunity covid it created a distance which wasn't intentional between us and others but now we have that opportunity after that while maybe at that point you didn't want to go to the other person maybe there's someone who has a brother he's not speaking to or there's a sister he's not speaking to or there's a parent that we're not speaking to so use this opportunity now to make amends So when someone hurts or oppresses us we do have three options however Allah has given us three options one is that you can make dua when someone oppresses you and Allah tells us that the dua, dua of an oppressor is never rejected meaning that you can make dua for the removal of that injustice number two you can wait until the day of judgment and demand some good deeds equivalent to the deeds done against you okay so there's a hadith which says that justice will be done such on that day that if a person comes to you on the day of judgment and he doesn't have deeds then you could even give your own bad deeds to the other person for the injustice done to you in this in this life okay so that's the second option but the third option which is actually very few of us practice and which is actually the best option is that you forgive and you overlook the oppression so what is the benefit of doing so allah tells us in the quran the retribution of an evil lacked is one like it however whoever forgives and reconciles the reward is with allah So here Allah is saying it's like when a friend tells you look I got you I got you right when a friend tells you is your own problem 
you got a problem, your friend tells you, I've got you. This is what Allah is saying. You forgive, you reconcile, and your reward is with Allah. Okay? And when the reward, and when we know that there is a, a gift for us, when a queen or a king, he's maybe giving us a reward or a gift, we must think, oh, it's a big value gift. There's something in that gift. But when it's the king of kings, when it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's telling us, he's going to give us a reward, then how big that reward must be. But maybe some of us are saying, you know, Farhan, the, when I was oppressed or what that guy did, I'm telling you, I'm not going to forgive that. It was just too much. He did too much damage to me. He did too much. But my advice is, is maybe it will take some weight off your shoulders. Hey, this weight that we're carrying, because we have this pain, someone has caused us. It's not causing the other person any pain, but it's causing ourselves some pain. And it's weighing us down. And we're not doing the things that we want to do because we're still thinking about it, still thinking and reassessing that situation. So this may lighten the load on our shoulders. So just to appreciate how cheap this dunya is, and the reality of this dunya, the Prophet wasallam, he was walking with his companions and he saw a dead carcass and, we, and I'm sure a lot of us have, have heard of this on the side of the road and he said to the people who would want this and none of the people wanted it they all said no no we don't want this we don't want this and then he asked what if it was free okay? so he understands us Muslims we like freebies we like free things Right? Even then, they said, even if it was alive, even if it was free, we would not want this dead carcass. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, by Allah, he swore by Allah, this dunya is lesser value to him than the dead goat is in your eyes. So what is in this dunya that we are willing to cut the ties of brotherhood because of this? What is there in the dunya that causes us to cut these ties of brotherhood? So, I mean, you know, we may all know. We may even know ourselves. Maybe we haven't talked to our parents for months. Maybe we haven't talked to our brother. Maybe there's been a dispute in the family. Or a cousin. Or a friend that we used to hang around with all the time and something happened. And now we don't see him. So what happened to that friendship? What happened to that connection? So when we know we can forgive, we have to ask ourselves, how did the Sahaba behave? How did they react? So the Sahaba made mistakes, but what would they do? So an incident at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they was they had a war, there was some booty, they had to split the booty. And Abu Dhar, he is one of the, the the most famous, one of the famous companions, and mashallah, one of the most amazing people. If you read more and more about him, he's an amazing individual, Abu Dhar. And he was giving his opinion on what we should do with this booty. How should we split it? Where should we split it? And then there was Bilal. I think most of us know Bilal, the Muazin. He was from African heritage. He disagreed with Abu Dhar. And he said, no, no, Abu Dhar, I disagree with you. And Abu Dhar, in the heat of the moment, he said, are you going to disagree with me, you son of, a, uh, of an African woman? Are you going to disagree with me today? So Bilal, he heard that. Then he went to the Prophet ﷺ to help him. He didn't hold it in his heart for 20 years. And every time that that brother is then mentioned, he's thinking, how can I slander him? How can I talk ill of him? He goes straight to the Prophet to try and sort this out. So the Prophet وسلم, he became angry when he heard. And then he went to Abu Dhar and he grabs Abu Dhar and he shakes him. And he says, Abu Dhar, you have some jahiliyyah in your heart. And jahiliyyah is like the ignorance, pre-Islam ignorance, the way people were before Islam came. And a real man, you know, he acknowledges mistakes, right? The real man. So then what does Abu Dhar do? Abu Dhar, he goes to the streets trying to look for Bilal. 
He goes to the streets trying to look for Bilal publicly. And in front of everyone, he goes down on his knees, on the floor, and says to Bilal, I will not lift my head off the floor until you step on it with your foot and let it be known openly which one of us is on it and which one of us is dishonored. So this is the Sahaba. And then what does Bilal do? He sees Abu Dhar in front of him. Okay, some of us would really treasure this moment if someone had done something. And they're there, ready, willingly, they've submitted, they've said, yes, we've done wrong. What did Bilal do? What did he say? Oh, I told you, brother, you messed up. You did this wrong. Why did you do it? Bilal gets down on his hands and knees and he kisses Abu Dhar on the head and says, I forgive you. Done. Finish. That's it. It's all done. So see, forgiveness is seen as a weakness. We think it's an option for us to forgive and we will hold it onto the day of resurrection. But being part of a Muslim is to have a heart that forgives and loves to forgive. Regardless of the crime. <laughs>
that walked the day before. So the person wanted to find out what's so special about this man that the Prophet is saying this man is going to go to Jannah. So he made some excuse to spend some time with him. So he spent three days with him. Three days he went traveling with him, went everywhere. He wanted to see what it is. What does this person do that he is given Jannah for? So he looked and, he, and at the end of it he was like, there's nothing. I can't see. He didn't... He prayed the shawbas, he prayed the salah, but he didn't pray the hajjib. You know, he didn't do stuff during the day, he didn't fast during the day. And he was frustrated. So after the three days, he came up to him and said, look, this is, this is the real reason I came. I want you to find out what it is you're doing. And then the man replied, he said, look, I, I, I don't really know, I don't really know. But then as the man was about to leave, then he shouted out to him, he said, wait, wait. I think I know, I think I know. And he said, every night before I sleep, I forgive anyone that wronged me. And I clear my heart, so I keep no grudges. So this is it, brothers and sisters. No extra nawafir, no fasting. This guy, he just forgave. Okay? He just forgave. And you know, for us, to uh, pray throughout the night, to do all these things, it's tough for us. These, these are the things that maybe we can achieve. This is something that we can really aim for and really try and strive for so that, inshallah, we will also be of those who will enter Jannah. May Allah make us of those who are forgiven, who are also forgiving. Uh, inshallah. And عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء تنفيذ القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأتيموا